my childhood was in a way very serious. Those were bad times and I remember coming with my parents, receiving refugees from the concentration camps which came to Sweden after 45. You don't forget that. There was also the constant fear of Nazi occupation of Sweden. Having grown up under the shadow of World War II and deeply influenced by eyewitness stories of the unbelievable atrocities committed by the Nazis, Gerald Nagler decided to abandon his 25-year career in business and devote his life to fighting for human rights. Nagler derived his inspiration from Russian Nobel Peace Prize laureate and dissident Andrei Sakharov, who urged people in both East and West to unite and form independent organizations to ensure human rights were respected in accordance with the 1975 Helsinki Final Act. Signed by 35 nations, the Helsinki Final Act addressed a range of global issues, including establishing post-World War II borders and preventing any repetition of the Nazi persecution of dissenters. The first Helsinki group was established in Moscow by 12 brave men and women who were later all badly discriminated, exiled and imprisoned. In 1982, I was encouraged to start the Swedish Helsinki Committee. I mobilized 100 prominent Swedish men and women to back up on this project. We, had, we started in our kitchen at home. We had no budget, we had no staff, we had no office but we had a mission. Countless and sometimes risky trips were made to countries behind the Iron Curtain to document human rights violations and put countries that did not comply with the agreement in the spotlight. Gerald Nagler also co-founded the International Helsinki Federation for Human Rights, which served as an umbrella organization for the national committees. He led the work of the Helsinki Federation for 10 years as Secretary General. We were traveling in all these repressive countries behind the Iron Curtain, meeting fascinating men and women who had been working with risk of their freedom and life for democracy, human rights and freedom. To sit in the kitchen with Andrei Sakharov and Yelena Bonner and hear that story are highlights in my life. You learn so much about courage, about ethics, about morale. I deeply admire them. I met many times the famous dissident Václav Havel. I went to see him at his summer dacha. And um, the first thing I said when we came, knowing that all the rooms and houses where dissidents were, were bagged, my first question was, should we take a walk? And he laughed and he said, not really, because they will listen to us wherever we are, pointing to a house built 100 meters from his dacha, where the KGB had put up a, a listening device center, following his voice wherever it was. This show, shows how sick the society was. Gerald Nagler was himself arrested by the KGB and declared persona non grata, but never let himself be intimidated in his fight for democracy and human rights. Under his leadership, the International Helsinki Federation received much praise for its work, which has also been attributed as contributing to a significant degree towards the fall of the Iron Curtain. You cannot say for sure 
which impact did our work have? And I believe that the work for these human rights activists participated heavily to the fact that the wall came down without spilling of blood. I deeply admire all these unknown men and women who were fighting and never were recognized, never became famous. They did a very important job. They were heroes in the dark. But the period of joy after the fall of the wall was a short one. The war in the Balkans posed a new tough challenge for Gerald Nagler and his colleagues. Helsinki committees were started in Serbia, Bosnia and Croatia, and work goes on to this very day to document human rights violations committed during the bloody conflict and, if possible, to prosecute the guilty parties. In 2009, the Swedish Helsinki Committee took on a new form and was renamed Civil Rights Defenders. It currently operates in more than 30 countries on four continents. You see human rights violations all over, and uh, it is sad to see the negative development in some countries such as Hungary, Russia, Poland, Turkey, etc. However, I am very optimistic. To the opposite is only destructive. Uh, I think that it is extremely positive to see that human rights is today on everyone's agenda. I am very happy to see that my little Helsinki baby, born in our kitchen, is now this strong global organization, Civil Rights Defenders.